unbelief. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. praise the Lord. If you love the Lord, just worship Him for a moment in your heart. Just say, I love Him, I love Him, I love Him. Oh, as a belief, you can do better. Those of you watching via the internet, welcome. We trust that you're going to have a blessed time with us this, this evening. And I believe that God is going to be something awesome in our midst. I wonder if you have not been in a meeting where I've preached the last time, if you're here. The Lord will forgive you uh, eventually. Uh, it takes a while, but okay. <laughs> Praise God. Pastor Henry, thank you. Um, it's always a privilege and an honor to be able to minister from a, another man's platform um, with respect and, and knowing that um, I stand under authority. Um, and, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. And it's always a privilege to minister the Word of God because if you found, you know, that if you preach a lot and one day you don't preach anymore, then you realize how you value something and how much you love that. And how many of you love the Word? Amen. How many of you love the Word of God? I'm, I'm, I'm Afrikaans speaking, but I'm going to minister in English tonight, um, if, if that is okay with you. Say yes. yes. Say we forgive you. For the Roy Neck language. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know where to start. I've been eating on a lot of things um, for a couple of days on what to minister for you tonight. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to try to leave you something that's going to allow you to eat on that for the next year. I don't want to leave something that's going to be milk and out of your system very quickly. But I want to drop something in your heart, in your life today that will change not just you, but will change the course of your life. The, 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 the way you walk, the way you do things, um, the way you worship, the way you come to church, the way you go to work. Um, all these things need to be able to come in line with what the Word of God is saying. And what God wants for our lives. And, and I believe that God has got something thick for you today. Is that okay? Um, I still don't know where I'm going with this. But I, I've, you know when you pray. Um, the way I work messages out is a little bit different than what other people maybe do. it. But I pray. And as I pray, scriptures will start popping up. Amen. And I will start putting things down. Um, and then um, sometimes what will happen is that um, in the beginning of the year... Um, in the past, I would go and I would um, spend a lot of time with the prophets. You know, the, the men of God that are true prophets. I'm not talking about parking lot prophets. Um, the guy that grabs you in the parking lot when no one is there to judge what he's prophesying over you. Um, I don't know if you know, you get parking lot prophets. Now, I'm a very weary of parking lot prophets because... Um, you know, there's no one that will say to them, listen, you missed. <laughs> That's why it's important when we come in the presence of God, in the church, that, um, that this order. Um, and we, I mean, we're, not, we're not talking about sh still the, it's quiet, just be quiet, it's church. No, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talk talking about kingdom order. And, and we need to understand where the apostolic fits in, where the prophetic fits in, and where everything fits into our lives. And we have to honor these positions that God had placed in authority over us. Because the Bible says that God had placed people in authority over us to be able to direct us to the place where we have to go. And at some stage in our lives, we have to do that. But um, I'm not talking about parking of prophets. I'm talking about a prophetic voice. And I believe that sometimes God will bring people to your lives that is a prophetic voice. And this voice will, will alter and or let's say it like this when, when you when you heed to the voice of the prophet what will happen is, is is that it will schedule certain amount of miracles for your life the instructions that you follow is the future that you will create for yourself Amen. and god will not go above your pastor's head and anoint you and say that now you are the one that's in charge to do whatever you want to do so you have to come into what God is busy doing. And that's why 
um, I tap, always try to tap into the anointing that's already in the building, in the house. Sometimes there's nothing. I'll be honest. Sometimes the pastors are as cold as a fridge and the congregation are ice cubes. So I'm trying to tap into fire. So yes, fire in this house. So Pastor Henry, thank you. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege this, this evening. Please turn in your Bibles to Ephesians 1. It is Resurrection Sunday, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Oh, oh. Amen. Say it is Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Oh, praise God. Some of you don't really believe, but it's Resurrection Sunday, by the way. Okay, Ephesians 1. And I'm going to speak to you a little bit about Paul. Is that okay? Yeah. I love Paul. I love his doctrines. And we need to understand that doctrine is very important in a believer's lives. And it's so difficult when you come to churches that, that I, over the years I was privileged by the grace of God to be able to preach more than 300 meetings in a year. And then you stand on different platforms and every church has got different doctrines. Yeah. And it is so difficult for a traveling guy to come in and still minister in between the guidelines of not stepping on toes. Um, and so when you come in, you try to bring something that is in line with what the church is doing. But it's very difficult because I cannot adapt myself constantly to the doctrines of every church. Because if you have to doc, because there's different doctrines. Paul had a doctrine. And Peter had a doctrine, and these two could not stand together. We have to understand that there's disagreements in the body of Christ about how they read and how they interpret the Word of God. Yeah. So maybe some people is at this level of maturity or revelation, and then God will maybe bring you at a certain place, and then all of a sudden now you start preaching new things, new year, yeah. um, different things. Why? Because revelation had been added into your life as you walk with God. So we're not all at the same level, and we not all have we have not all arrived. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. But Paul, I love what he was preaching about because it, it speaks to me. How many of you know when, when the preacher preaches, he must speak to you, otherwise you're not going to want to come back? Isn't that the truth? Come on, your pastor must be speaking something right for you to be able to come back. Not that he is doing this to your ears, but he is, he is speaking truth that is busy setting you free in every area of your life. Now Paul was one of these preachers for me. I love him. Um, I love what he was preaching about. So I'm going to try to bring a balance and try not to step on toes today, is that okay? Amen. Because I might say things that you say, but this is not what my doctrine or what my belief system is about. Bear with me, is that okay? Amen. Don't judge me. Remember, it's only Pharisees that throw stones. <laughs> <laughs> say, I forgive the pastor before he preached. Amen. So now, if you don't do it, you're in trouble. Okay. For Ephesians 1. And we're going to read from, ah, let's see, verse 16. He says here, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. It's always important to find a pastor that prays, or that prays. Amen. Because he must pray for you. And that's the covering that comes over you when he prays. Amen. He seeks God and he spends time with God and he will promote and demote as the Lord tells him to do. Why? Because he's uh, governing your spiritual life. It's very important. So here he comes and he says this. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of of wisdom. Say the spirit of wisdom. <laughs> Say wisdom is the principal thing. <laughs> they said, but look at this, the spirit of wisdom and revelation yes. in the knowledge of Him. He didn't say here um, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Word. He was speaking here about wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus of who he is. Is that okay? Amen. So we're going to get a little bit deeper, don't worry. Um, 
um, now verse 18 is very important. He, he says here, he says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. I say that your Because there's a lot of believers who's been sitting in church, but their eyes or their spiritual seeing, yeah. how they read the word and how they interpret spiritual things has been blinded still. And there's a veil over their faces and they cannot see what God is doing. And most of the time, what happens when you cannot see what God is doing, people who necessarily always, what they do is that they start criticizing the move of God and what God is busy doing. Because they cannot see it yet. But Paul is praying here, he says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you, will, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, and what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance. Okay, so look, look at this quickly. He is saying that Jesus had received an inheritance. Oh, please. You, must, you, you need to know that when Jesus died, he, the Father gave Him an inheritance. There's something that Jesus received because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. But we're going to go a little bit deeper now. Is that okay? He says this. Say inheritance. Yeah. Say Jesus has got an inheritance. Okay, remember inheritance usually come when someone dies. Is that right? Yeah. But Jesus, He was the firstborn, yeah. come on out of the dead, and because He died, He received the inheritance yes. that God has for the church, because we are the body, He is the head. Hello? Amen. And we do what He wants us to do, because God is in control of your life. The moment that you've given your heart to Jesus and your life to Jesus, from that very moment, your money does not belong to Come you. On, yes. Come on, your house does not belong to you. Your beautiful car does not belong to you. Yeah. Because at any moment, God can walk up to you and say, Listen, I want to shift my inheritance. Come on, it's good. I want to shift something over to another part of the kingdom. Yes. And you need to do it. Why? Because it's all about the advancement and the forwarding of what God is busy doing here on this earth in the kingdom of God. Say so the kingdom. The kingdom. Yeah. Verse 19. He says, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power? Oh, what is the exceeding? Okay, exceeding but, but means it's bigger. Is that right? What is the exceeding greatness of His power? Towards us. Yep. So here the word is saying that there is an inheritance and there is an exceeding power that is aimed on, towards you. Amen. Amen. So there is a power that we can tap into that is designed for us to be able to function. This inheritance that God has left for us in the kingdom. Okay. He says, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us? Who believe? Say believe. Believe. According to the working of His mighty power. Now it's going to get a bit better. Which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in heavenly places. Far above. Come on. Come on. Jesus has been raised far above yes. principalities and powers and might and dominion. Come on. And yes. every name that is named. Come on. If something has got a name, Jesus was raised above. Amen. Oh. So I don't care what is happening in your life. Poverty has got a name. And the Word of God says that Jesus was raised above poverty. He was raised above sickness. He was raised above. Come on. So we need to understand what Jesus did. So we're going to go there now. Is that okay? Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers 
and every okay every name that is named not only in this age but also in the age to come and he Christ has put all things under his feet hello Amen. say all things Amen. is under Jesus' feet under Jesus. And he put all things under his feet and gave him, Jesus, to be the head over all things to the church, yes. which is his body, yes. the fullness oh, yes. of him. So if you want to know what is the fullness of God, you have to look at the body. Yeah, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, in me dwells the fullness Amen. of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is now dwelling. That fullness of God Amen. is now living and dwelling inside of me. Yes. So don't look for power. It's already been deposited yep. in you. Yep. It says here, the fullness. We are looking for miracles and things to come from heaven. But let me tell you something. It's going to come from out of the kingdom. Amen. The kingdom that's already been deposited inside of you. Is that okay? And the good thing here is, is that God had placed all things under His feet. Oh, let me rephrase that. God had placed when He was raised from the dead. That's why this day is so important. Because we wouldn't have had the word being preached to us today if Jesus wasn't raised from the dead. Amen. So God used all His power and He raised Jesus from the dead. And He lifted Him up. And he placed all things under your feet. That's right. Okay, do you hear my words that I'm using? He didn't put it under Jesus' feet because really you are his feet. Come on, you are the body, the church. Jesus put all things under his foot. Remember in the Garden of Eden when God said to Adam, Adam, I want you to rule, reign, multiply, subdue the earth, have dominion. Hello? Subdue means to put under the foot. Yeah. So God is waiting for His body to stop functioning. That's right. You have to start putting things under your foot. Why? Because you have been raised with Him in heavenly places. You are no longer an earthly being. You are no longer from this world. Come on. You are a heavenly being. You are a kingdom citizen. Yes. Yes. With kingdom laws. Laws that operate different to our laws. Our law says don't give. Hold on. The kingdom law says give and it will be given back to you. Our law says that you cannot walk on water. The kingdom law says listen, step out of the boat and walk on the water. We have to understand that natural law says once a man dies, he cannot live again. But the kingdom says, listen, there's different laws. I'll speak into a tomb and Lazarus will come out again. So we have to understand this very clearly that because Jesus was raised, the moment that he was raised, and you decided in your heart that Jesus Christ, you are Lord and Savior of my life, and you go into baptism. Yes. That's why it's so important for you to be baptized. Yeah. I'm not talking about your fingers being put, put into a cup. <laughs> I'm talking about you going under the water, yes. and you come out of the water, you are being baptismo, yeah. baptized under the water. Come on. And the Bible says that then that moment you have been buried with Christ yes. and raised with Him. Yes. So the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead raised you into a new man the day that you were baptized. So from that moment on, the old man no longer has got impact in you. Supposed to be. Yeah. 
So for you to be able to go and sin, what you really need to do is that you need to go back to the baptismal pool yeah. and resurrect that old man and then you tell the old man, Frukirio! Yeah. 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 You see, man you need to understand that the new man in Christ cannot sin. But the old man can still sin. Oh. Uh, ah. See, what we do is that we, we want to gossip. We go to the cemetery and go raise the old man. Yeah. And say, listen, we know that you are really dead. But I need you for a moment. Please come back into me, old man. Come on, preach. Hey, no. No. Ouch! You see, the moment that you've been resurrected, that very moment when you come get out of the water, something happened to you spiritually. Amen. I understand that when Jesus comes to live inside of you, when you were born, when you became born again, yeah. but something happens to you when you were baptized. That old man died. And the new man was resurrected with Christ. With Christ. You were resurrected with Christ. You were raised up. Come on. Above your circumstances. You were raised up above your problems. You were raised up above what this world wants to give you. And, and, and force you into submission to. Yeah. You were raised above it. Say so I'm above it. Tell your neighbor, Muniwari. Muniwari. You see, our whole walk with God revolves about one to oh, three truths. Can I, can I, three. What did Jesus conquer and obtain through his death, his burial, and his resurrection? You. In my life, Pastor Henry, every doctrine that I receive, let's say I listen to someone preaching. Now I listen to doctrine. Is that okay? The moment I receive doctrine, I first do something in my brain. I say, does this doctrine fit in to the death, the burial, and the resurrection? If it does not fit into what Jesus had accomplished through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, that doctrine has got no right to be in my life. Come on. <laughs> now, I believe this will help you for the rest of your life. Because if someone come to you and tell you God is going to judge you and God is angry with you, yeah. what you first have to do is say, whoa, wait, 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 wait. What did Jesus do on the cross? Exactly. Come on. Is God angry with me? No. Why is He not angry? Because when God judged Jesus, He judged Him for my sin, for my iniquity, for my wrongdoing. And God says, Lawrence, you are being pardoned because of what Jesus did. Yes. I judged Him. So, God's angry. Oh, you get this. You're clapping. <laughs> Everything that God was angry about, what man had done, God judged his son with it. He's in a good mood. Yes. He's in a good mood. Thank you, Pastor. So God is not angry with you. God is at peace with you. Amen. That's why the Bible says that we have to preach the gospel of peace. Okay. No, 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 no. What did Jesus do? Or what did Jesus conquer? Because something was conquered. Someone was conquered. Yeah, yes. So when Jesus died on the cross, He did not die to fight the devil. What did Jesus do on the cross? Jesus died on the cross for your sin, for your sickness, and for your curse. Yes. So when He said, It is finished, what did he say? I have now just put a, an end to the curse 
that was supposed to come to Lawrence. Very good. So I can no longer judge Lawrence. Why? Because I, every time I look at him, I see the blood. So when I see the blood, I cannot judge now. And by the way, you will never ever in your life ever be judged for sin again. Now I'm going to explain to you now why. Because Jesus died for your sin past, present, and future. So when we stand before God one day, He's not going to judge us for our sin. The Bible says we will be judged for our works. Yep. What did you do with the Bible today? Come on. Right. What did you do with the revelation that you've received? Yes. That's where we're going to be judged. But this does not mean that you can do what you want to do and sin how you want to sin. Because you, you play the grace card now. Come on. You need to understand grace before you start preaching grace. And most people in the church do not even understand what grace really is. That's why people fall off the boat this side. And they say, well, because I'm under grace, once saved, always saved. Yeah. It does not work like that. No. You can lose your salvation. Why? Because one day you stepped into the old man again. Yeah. And the old man, yeah. unfortunately, is going to hell. Yeah. It's a free will, man. So you have to live habitually in the presence of God. Knowing that you cannot earn God's favor, you cannot earn God's righteousness, you cannot earn anything, it's a free gift given to you. Amen. Something took place when you received your heart to the Lord. Okay, let me, let me go on. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. What did Jesus conquer and obtain through His death, His burial and His resurrection? I always ask myself that question. This doctrine, it's the will of God for you to be sick. Really? In what comic book do you read that? <laughs> Come on, preach. Hello, it's like this one pastor that said the one day, no, um, you know, pastor, please don't, don't, don't pray for me because I believe God is judging me because I've done so many wrong things. Now I'm, I'm, I've got cancer in my leg. Sure. So the pastor started praying, Father, I pray that you will give him cancer in the other leg as well. <laughs> Because somehow he believed it's the will of God. Yeah. How many of you know you can be sincere but sincerely wrong? Yeah. Yeah. It's important that you find out what the word is saying. Don't listen and don't just believe what every preacher on TV is saying. Come on. You have to study this word for yourself. Amen. Number two. Our faith revolves around the three things. Number one. Number two. Am I in him? Am I in Him? You see, most people will say, well, Christ in me is the hope of glory. But am I in Him? You have to be planted into the vine. Uh, you see, a lot of times we say, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us can do all these things. But Jesus said, if I abide in you and, and, you, and, me. and you and me, then you will start to what? bear much fruit the reason why Christians are not bearing fruit is because either they they have received Jesus and Jesus had come to live inside of them but they have never adapted their life to be planted into him sure. this is good preaching Amen. okay one of you thank you very much <laughs> afterwards please come I'll buy a book <laughs> number three do I believe that being in Him qualifies me to share in these benefits? Okay. You see, because everything is about faith. Colossians, quickly go, quickly go to Colossians. I don't want to preach too long tonight. Where's Colossians? In some of the Bible. <laughs> there it is. Are you there? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Are you there? Okay, stop. Colossians 2 verse 6. He says here, As you therefore have received Christ, 
Jesus the Lord. How many of you have received Christ? Yes. Look, look, you okay. He says here, Paul comes and he writes this. He says, as you have received Christ, the Lord, so walk in Him. Amen. The way that you've received Christ is the way that you have to walk in Him. How did you receive Christ? The Bible says we have received Him, what? By grace, through faith. Is it right? So he, he comes here and he says, listen, as you have received Christ, so keep on walking in Him. Do not add anything on. It is not the gospel plus bloodline curses. You see, because somewhere someone taught you that the sins of the forefathers is transferred, transferred into the third and the fourth generation. And one day the Lord said to me, Lawrence, I want you to read on. And I carried reading on. And I started seeing there, of those who hate God. I said, I don't hate you, Lord. And then this is what the Lord said to me. Then this scripture is not applicable to you. You see, what we've done is that we've got the gospel, a free gift, because remember grace, we have been saved by grace, through faith. What is grace? Unmerited favor. Something that you haven't earned. You have not become the righteousness of God because you said 17 Hail Marys. Hello? Uh -oh. You did not become the righteousness of God. Oh, by the way, let me just take it a little bit deeper. You cannot become more righteous than what you are right now. Because righteousness, you have received righteousness. It is an internal thing that takes place as when the kingdom come in you. The kingdom you receive, the one you cannot earn the kingdom. You receive the kingdom. Righteousness you cannot earn, you receive it. Amen. So, you have been saved by grace, unmerited favor. You haven't earned, you haven't worked for this, you haven't done anything to receive the righteousness of God. So when God looks at you, He cannot see anything but His righteousness in you. You have therefore received Christ, so walk in Him. Continue walking in Him. Do not start. Paul is writing here. He says, you've received God. Come on. You've received Christ by grace through faith. Now that you've received Him, why is it that you try to earn God's hand? Why is it that you try to earn His favor? Why is it that you try to earn anything from God? Because you cannot work it. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. The law was labor. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the law, the Bible says the law is useless, obsolete, made for the rubbish heap. Amen. Why? Because Jesus came. And because when Jesus came, now you don't have to earn anything. You have you don't have to earn your miracle. You don't have to earn to be touched by God. It's free. Ferrari for free. Okay. Am I messing with their minds right now? I'm so glad. Look at this. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the face, faith, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving, beware lest anyone cheat you. Hello? Yeah. So you can be cheated out of grace. Mm. You can be cheated out of your miracle. 
can be cheated out of prosperity. Yeah. When the doctor gives you a diagnosis and he says, you're going to die. <laughs> what is the first thing that you do? Oh, doctor, you know my great, great, great grandfather died of the same thing. Come on. You cannot earn anything. You cannot earn, but you can be cheated out of your inheritance. Yeah. How can you be cheated? Paul says, as you have received Christ, so keep on walking in Him. By grace, Amen. through faith. That's right. Okay. Something comes to you when you keep on walking by faith. Oh, look, you please God. Yeah. Let me just take a little bit deeper. He says, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ. For in Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. And you are complete in Him, who is the head over all principality and power. Come on, is this good? Amen. Our walk with Jesus revolves around one truth. What do I believe in my heart about Jesus? Yeah. I don't care where you come from, whether you've been a Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, and one of these other guys. <laughs> what do you believe in your heart about Jesus? Yeah. Because remember, for those... Okay, let me go. Let me do a scripture, otherwise you don't believe. We can turn over. Romans. Do you love the Lord? Amen. There's Romans in my Bible. Sorry. There you go. Ooh, this is a good one. Verse 10, verse. I'm almost done. <clears throat> Let's read from verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you do what? If you believe. What is the condition for you to be saved? You have to believe. Is that right? Okay, so if you believe, then what happens to you? You receive. If you doubt, you go without. Okay, so if you believe, come on, in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is over, over all, is rich to all who call upon Him. Yeah. Oh. Amen. It says that Jesus is rich. Amen. Over all. Okay. Now. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever. Are you a whoever? Yes. I love the Bible because it speaks about whoever's and whatsoever's. Yes. If whoever believes in his heart and confesses with his mouth, he will be saved. The Greek word there is the word zozo, that means, listen, to be saved, to be healed, to be blessed, to be protected, to be made whole, and to be sanctified. Amen. One word, saved. So he says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, zozo. Okay, let me take it, can I take it a little bit deeper? So, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You will not call on the name of the Lord if you do not believe. Okay. Okay, if you believe God wants to judge you, will you go to Him? So, if 
you believe that God is out there and He's waiting for you to do something wrong so that He can sap you with poverty. <laughs> because, listen to me, that's what people believe. Yeah. Because I've done something wrong now, because I've done something wrong, immediately you waited. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. You see, you will not call upon the name of the Lord if you do not believe. You will not call upon Jesus to heal you if you believe He's putting the sickness on you. Okay, now it's getting deep. And the only way that you... Okay. You will not believe that God wants to prosper you financially if you believe that you are cursed. Most people will not call on Him because they believe it is God that's doing it to them. Oh, I'm going to teach this boy a lesson. Yeah. And then all of a sudden things go wrong in your life and you say, Yeah, I told you. God is out to get me. Listen, if God was out to get you, you would have been gone, dead, gone. You would have done this. And you go. But you will not call on Him if you do not believe. Now look at this. He says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, so. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, it says, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? Some preachers went. They were not sent. Because when they open their mouths, they bring death. The Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. So it's important that you sit under a man of God that preaches the truth. Why? Because whatever your pastor preaches to you will become your experience. Amen. If he preaches about joy, you're going to run around with joy. If he preaches about love, you're going to hug everybody. Come on, help me out. If he preaches about the power, you want to lay hands on everybody. Because whatever he preaches to you will become your experience. Amen. You will start doing things what you heard on the platform. But unfortunately, the Bible says here, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Good news. Not all preachers are preaching the gospel of peace. Because when they open their mouths, there's a whole lot of hogwash coming out saying that God is going to judge South Africa. Yeah. yeah. Come on. How can God judge us? If the Bible says that if you pray and you humble yourself and you turn from your wicked ways, He will come and heal your land. Amen. God is not in the judge. He, he's no longer in the judging business. Old Testament, he was a great judge. <coughs> Did something wrong? <laughs> judge and executioner. But God is no longer judge and executioner. Come on. God is a father. He says, as earthly fathers who are evil that knows how to do good things for the children, how much more yes. our Heavenly Father. Come on, if there's any father in this place, you will go through the earth to move mountains to get to your children to help them to do what they have to yes. do. Amen. To 
give them an inheritance. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance right. for his children's children. Right. Say so an inheritance. An inheritance. I'm almost done. Wait, good. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. And then he goes on, he says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? You see, some people just don't believe what the word is saying. If God says, I want to bless you, I don't believe it. Ask Thomas. I don't believe it. Seeing is believing. You're right. You have to see it by faith. And call those things that be not just as though they were. But unfortunately, there are some preachers whose feet are stinking. They haven't got beautiful feet. Because why? They are not preaching the gospel of good news, of glad tidings, of good things. What am I doing now, right now? I am telling you that God loves you. I am telling you that God cares about you. I am telling you that God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God wants to heal you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to do good things to you. What am I doing? My feet have become so beautiful. Yeah. But if I come and tell you that God, oh, watch out. Yeah. You see, some people believe in the third generation certain things. But my Bible says, but the blessing of the Lord is but for a thousand generations. Come on, if I love God, God says, listen, if you receive my son, you inherit the kingdom. Oh, oh, oh. Bring me my glass. 
Is this him? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you see, I cannot in my in my way of thinking, my doctrine, my my um uh, my core belief system, I cannot believe that the devil has got power. Because my Bible says that Jesus stripped him. That's right. Powerless. Yes. Powerless. Yes. Powerless. Powerless. Of all rank, principality, and power, I made a public spectacle of him. Okay, let me go on my closing now. What is a spectacle? In the olden days, the Roman soldiers would come and they will fight in a battle. And as they fight this battle, the one army will overcome the other one. Usually what they will do, they will try to take the king captive. Yeah. Okay. That's why all of them fall on their own swords, kill themselves. Why? Because they don't want to be spoiled. Yeah. Now Paul was writing, because everything, remember, he was in the concept in the day of the Roman Empire. So he would say, okay, um, you have, Jesus spoiled him. So what he was saying is that, what did Jesus do? Jesus took the enemy captive. Yeah. And then he stripped him of all rank, no. all power, all authority. All authority. Yeah. As he stripped him down to bare nakedness. They would take him, the, the, the army or the general or the king of the, of the army that was conquered, would take this man captive yeah. and lead him and parade him through the streets, naked. So everybody would spit on him, throw him with tomatoes, all gold. Oh, I forgot the bottle. <laughs> they would be spoiled. The Bible says that Jesus spoiled Satan. What did he do? He left him with nothing in his power to retaliate. Paul says, when you fight the devil, he says, it's like shadow boxing. You are beating in the air something that's been defeated. Amen. So for me to say, I have a bloodline curse. Simply means that Jesus did not do a proper job on the cross. Amen. For me to say that God wants me poor. Simply means that Jesus did not die for poverty on the cross. <laughs> for you to say that it is the will of God for me to be sick. Simply means that the blood that was shed was useless. You see, there is a place in my life for the devil. I don't talk much about him. I just know where he is. But sometimes what happens is that we stop believing the gospel. The good news of crap tidings of good things. And when we open our mouths, we say these things. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Does any tire any juke, my brother? Under the omstandigheden gaan het goed. What did you just say? That you have positioned your life under your circumstances. Who for you? What? What happened now? Good afternoon, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon. I 
actually went the other day, my daughter, it was the half half of thing. And my daughter said, what place is this? I said, no, this the last lady, she was sitting there by the little desk. I said, this is what the word half pop means. I love for being a lot of a And she walked up to the lady and says, my dad says, this is what. <laughs> she said to her, it's all right. Half pop. Come on, what do you believe? What is it that you believe? Because what you believe defines where you're going. What you believe is what you're going to have. Amen. I believe I've got power in my life. Amen. I believe the fullness of the God that dwells in me bodily. Yes. I believe when I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Amen. I believe when I pray for someone, come on, signs, wonders, and miracles will follow. What is it that you believe? Because if you don't believe it, you're not going to have it. You see, what we do is that we, when we call you out and say, come and pray for this God. Ooh, pastor, and it's not opgebid nie. So what you're really saying is that God will only move when you are prayed up. <laughs> what about on tijdig and tijdig? When you're ready or not ready. When you, when you don't feel like praying, then you pray and then God does it. I've seen God do more miracles when I had no faith. Amen. Why? Because I realized in my life that I cannot earn the Holy Spirit move in the church. Amen. Even if I pray hours. You know what I've done? I have stopped praying that God will move in meetings. And when I spend time in prayer, it will not really be prayer. It will be worship for three, four hours. Amen. And just praying in tongues. In. <laughs> Hitting that sweet spot right. that the Holy Spirit has got. I am here tonight to tell you that you have been raised with Christ Amen. and you are a dead kick devil butt generation. Yes. You are a generation that's going to feed, defeat the enemies and put them under your feet. You're going to defeat sickness, you're going to defeat disease, come on, you're going to defeat it. Why? Because of, of what you have done. You see, God is not judging us based upon our performance. How good you can pray. Yeah. How elegant your words. How holy you sound. Yeah. <laughs> God is not going to judge you based upon your performance. He's going to judge you based upon Jesus' performance. Amen. What did Jesus do? He became sick. So God is going to judge me how you healed. Amen. Come on, because most people think that judgment is all, always negative. Yeah. But the judge will pronounce a righteous judgment and the righteous judge will say innocent. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Talk to things. Talk to money. It must obey you. Yes. Talk to your circumstances. It must bow. If it's got a name, it's got a bow. Yes. You need to stop singing in the shower again. I've got a song that I sing in the shower. Man, he come not unto me. Shake it together, run it over. Man, he's coming unto me. Come on. Healing is coming unto me. Hallelujah. Where are you with your belief in the resurrection now? Because you have been raised with Christ. You say, well, but, but, but it's not every person that's going to be. So you say that God has got favorites? That God loves one child more than the other? 
So you saying that God likes to keep you sick so that He can show everybody in church what a sick person looks like? That's not the God I serve. Because if you believe that's the God that you serve, then you serve the wrong God. He's a Father of love. He's kind. He's gracious. He's wonderful. Come on. He wants to give things to you. Come on. He doesn't want to take things from you. Oh, the best way. He told you to say, Hoi, my friend. And he would hear a soup by God. God soup to your God. What are you going to do? Hello. The Koenig Krijg soup to your God. Your God. Want ergens moet iets gedoen word, want God gaan nie om die af, soos meneer Spock, beaming down and say, hey, I'm God here today, let me sort out your problems. He's not going to do that. God is going to put His anointing, His power, His ability, His fire in you, and then He's going to work through you to do His work and do what you have to do in you. My skop ken my stem. Kom on, en hulle volg my. En die stem van een vreemdeling ken hulle nie en hulle volg nie. Amen. You have been raised with Christ. Kom on, you've been raised. You've been raised, you've been raised with power, authority, might, dominion, signs, wonders, miracles. Signs, wonders, wonders, miracles. You've been raised with destiny. You have dreams inside of you that are so big that you need God. Because if God tells you to do something, let me tell you something, it's going to blow your mind. You're going to say, Ooh! Because God does not think in small. Pastor Henry, God does not think in small. So the Lord said to me this afternoon while I've been praying, I must tell you, stop thinking in another way, not in this way. This is what the Lord said to me. He says, don't root yourself because there's an apostolic mantle that's on you. For the Lord says, I will cause you to plant and to plant and to plant and to plant. For this is the season, the Lord said, today, that season has started in your life where you will no longer think church building a people, but you will think multiple buildings, multiple people. Amen. For the Lord said to me this afternoon, I must tell you, you have been tested for many, many years. Now the Lord is saying, I will release that what you have been tested through. Amen. And it will be duplication upon duplication upon duplication. You know what works and the Lord says just duplicate what works. Amen. But I, I sense the Lord is saying it's going to be different kinds of people. Yeah. One congregation will be so and the next one will be total different. But you're going to run between these churches. Why? Because your sons is going to come to maturity. Amen. And that's the only reason why you will be able to do it. It's because what you, God, deposited in you, you have deposited in them. And now you are not afraid to step out. Why? Because God has already scheduled all these things for you. Amen. I see the Lord is saying you're going to plant many churches. I'm talking about from scratch. And from this church, God's going to cause you to fund many of these works. So what is about to happen to you? There is a financial shift that's going to take place in your lives from not enough to just enough to more than enough. You will have more than enough for every good work. 
these people will be blessed, they will be given promotions, they will, someone will say, ah, I've been working for this God for all my life, now I'm going to do my own business. And God will prosper them. God's going to prosper the people in this church. I want to tell you that God's going to bless you financially. Why? Because God needs to fund what He needs to do. Amen. Say a billion flow. Amen. Don't stop thinking small. Yep. You see, my Bible says that God will do for you exceedingly abundantly above what you can imagine. Imagine. Your bank account full. Imagine, come on, you're driving a new car. Yeah, come on. Oh, some of you. Oh, if it only have a beetle. <laughs> the same amount of faith that's required for a Porsche is required for a beetle. You have to believe for a car. You see, what your vision is, what you see, you will move towards it. You have to start saying that the eyes of my understanding being enlightened that I may know what is it that God has got for me. Because God has got for every one of you something. Amen. And I'm not talking about it's going to be the same, it's going to be different. Different for you than what He's got for me. Yeah. But let me tell you something, it's awesome. Amen. It's awesome. The two of you quickly come. Come now. The Lord has been pulling my neck the whole time up towards